Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you 100 building tips and tricks in Minecraft that I have learnt over my many years of playing this game, all of which are ranging in difficulty, some perfect for a beginner and others that some of you more advanced players may never have heard of until now. But before we begin, I should say that I am making this video in celebration of the fact that we have just hit 100,000 subscribers on the channel, which is amazing. So thank you so much to each and every one of you. It is really, really appreciated. And of course, if you're new around here, please feel free to add to that number by subscribing down below. It doesn't cost you a thing, and I would be really happy to welcome you aboard. And without further ado, here is number one of 100 which is a little known trick when it comes to using path blocks. They are an entire pixel shorter than a full block. So when you use your shovel to make a path block, you can actually see under the block it is next to. Meaning if you have some wood, for example, you'll be able to see the dirt underneath it. Replacing that dirt with another wood block just makes it look a little bit neater. If you place three fences between two wall blocks, you'll get this cool arch shape. I especially like using this for bridges. I'm not a big fan of empty space when it comes to building, so I have a rule where if there's an area 3x3 three three blocks or more, all consisting of the same blocks, I need to place something there. Whether it's a shelf, a lighting fixture, or even just a painting, it's going to make your build feel a whole lot less open and empty, which usually, in my opinion, is a good thing. Here's one most of you probably know, but for those who don't, you can place stairs upside down, meaning your roof, for example, can go from looking like this to this. Much better, isn't it? That's not the only thing stairs can do, though. Depending on how you place them and the rotation of the stairs next to them, you can curve them, so to speak, which looks great on the corner of a build like this one. It's a lot less rigid and you just get a bit of a smoother line around. Some of my favourite blocks for building are the utility and villager profession blocks. They have some not so obvious textures. For example, the bottom of a smithing table looks like this and you could use it in a ceiling maybe. If you place the composter in a wall, the side texture works very well with a lot of wood types and the blast furnace has a great top texture too, perfect for a factory floor. And there are many, many more. But one I would like to highlight is the barrel, definitely one of my favourite blocks. They have a wonderful side texture which I use quite a lot for adding detail to my wooden pillars in a build, plus their underside texture is one of the best in the game, and because it's a barrel and the rotation can be changed, it means you can showcase this in the floor, wall or ceiling. Another block that is great for floors is the beehive. They are very similar to oak planks and certainly for more refined in my opinion. Of course, a honey farm would probably be necessary for this one. The mechanics of walls was recently changed in 1.16 so that if you place them down with nothing in front or behind them, they would completely smoothen out. So when you use this in a side of a build, they kind of act as vertical slabs and it's just a great way for adding in a small amount of depth. Real quickly, I would just like to say that if you are enjoying the video, please consider clicking the like button. This has taken a long time to make, so the support would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. If you use some trapdoors to surround the bottom block of a corner pillar, it can make it seem more sturdy and structurally sound. Plus, it's an added bit of detail that usually looks pretty good. Another use of trapdoors is that they are great for roof outlines, in particular spruce and dark oak. By adding them next to your slabs and stairs, you can get a much more gradual slope to your roof, even on a smaller scale. Speaking of roofs, if you want to make a rundown and dilapidated build, you can mix in some different slabs and stairs to your roof to portray that idea. Simply by switching them around and rotating some of the stairs, you can pretty much mess the roof up, making it look as though there are some missing pieces or just general holes in the roof. This also works well for everywhere else of course, but I think especially so for a roof. Another trick for making a ruined build is to add some greenery, vines and leaves, that sort of thing. However, when adding in those leaves, try to place them down in a way that makes sense. Instead of making a big clump like this or just adding in one sporadically throughout the build, try to think how they would grow. They'd probably stay pretty well connected and end up drooping over the edge of the build for example. Basically, don't just spam them everywhere, try to think about it a little bit. One of my favourite detail blocks is the flower pot. Obviously it's great for its intended use of displaying flowers, but I also like to use it just as an added bit of detail, like on the top of a fence here, or around the corners of a wall. 
Campfires are the perfect block to use as a chimney. Stick it on top of some blocks shooting out of a roof, cover it with trapdoors, and boom, you've got yourself a smoking chimney. What you can then do is connect that chimney to a fireplace on the inside. Now you've got somewhere that smoke is supposedly coming from. If you want to make a carpet for a floor, try using a mix of carpet blocks as well as ordinary wall blocks. Mixing these two together and adding that very small amount of depth makes the carpet seem a lot more shaggy, shall we say. If you have an empty space on the floor of your house, you can actually add in a carpet, or a rug may be a better term. This fills the gap nicely and should be a lovely addition to your home. Try experimenting with different patterns and carpet colours. See what you can come up with. We spoke earlier about the hidden textures of some of the profession blocks and one that's probably worth going over is the loom and in particularly the side texture. Mix it in with some bookshelves and you've now got some empty bookshelves. Once again, coming back to the uses of slabs and stairs and probably not for the last time either. If you're making a wall out of something that has slab and stair variants, you can place them into your wall and get some windows of varying sizes. You can also do this and then put a block behind that wall to give you a nice accent colour, like I've done here with the deep slate and amethyst. An extremely helpful tip for building, which I'm sure you would have heard mentioned before, is adding in texture to your build. This can make them look so much more interesting. Take this flat stone brick wall for example. Just by mixing in some other stone types, it already looks a whole lot better. An upgrade on the idea of adding in texture is adding in a gradient to your build. B00 is a master of this and I'd highly recommend checking out some of his stuff if you want to learn a bit more. But the premise is you find a group of blocks that together create a gradient, starting off darker and getting lighter, vice versa. You then use these blocks in your build to turn that entire thing into a gradient itself. This is especially useful in larger builds, maybe not something to bother with if you're working on a smaller scale. If you want to improve the look of your window, try adding in some trapdoors next to them to pose as shutters. Spruce trapdoors are usually the best option for this, in my opinion. You don't always have to place them on the side, however. You could do something like this by adding it above a window with an open fence gate just below. Something a bit different and may work better depending on the size and location of the window itself. We're going to stick with the trapdoors theme here. They are a great block for added bits of detail to a build. They don't necessarily have to always serve as something functional, perhaps place them in a pattern or just to cover up another block for no other reason than it looks cool. They are a fantastic shelf block to display some items on and you can also use them next to stairs in order to create an archway. Campfires can be extinguished by right clicking them with a shovel which actually leads them to be very helpful in all types of building but a specific detail I like to use them for is to make a small stack of logs simply by placing some oak logs down next to each other and then some extinguished campfires on top and around them it looks as though you've got some different pieces of lumber all stacked up in a pile. Another great use of the campfire is for displaying food. You can actually cook up to four pieces of food on them and if you extinguish them before they finish cooking, this time using a splash water bottle, this is what the end result looks like, which is pretty cool. And those food items will actually stay there until you break the campfire. One of my go-to decorations for the exterior of a house is flower beds. All you've got to do is surround some coarse dirt with trap doors, place some flowers on top and voila. And on the flip side, one of my go-to decorations for the interior of a house is by using scaffolding to make a small table. They are also fantastic for making some chair designs too. I love to use stripped oak logs as a flooring block. Because you can change the rotation of them, it means you can create some pretty cool patterns. Plus the texture itself isn't too in your face, so it's actually quite subtle. Now I'm not really sure how to explain what these are called. Decorative window pieces, I suppose? I don't know, but I add these around my windows all the time simply to make them look a little bit more interesting. Maybe you have a higher up window. How about hanging one of these down with some chains attached to them? And just hanging things from chains in general can look pretty sweet. A simple way to improve the look of your doors is to add in an awning. Maybe that's what the decorative window pieces should be called. Regardless, just by using four fences and three slabs at a very basic level, you can make your doorway look even better. 
If you're not a fan of the awning idea, then a super easy way to make your doorway look fancier is to place it on the back of a block instead of the front. This way you can add in a small amount of depth to the door and it's not just flat to the surface of the blocks. I've got a few more door tips for you here. The next one is to try using some stairs around the doorway like I've done here. That way, once again, we're adding in a small amount of depth and just generally making it look more interesting. I really like using chiseled blocks too in my doorways just by placing them in the corner. That way it's something similar but also a little bit different so it stands out. Perhaps you're building something slightly more modern. A great idea for a doorway is glass panes. By adding them in like I've done here with this build, you can create the illusion of double doors that would then swing open and shut. Of course, it's not very practical as glass panes do not possess that mechanic, but if you're not really worried about having a functional door, go right ahead with this one. Here is my last door trick, and that is to place trap doors next to your actual door to make a much larger door. This is especially great for castles, and like most things, works best with spruce. Once again, using spruce trap doors, you can make a neat looking wall divider to separate different parts of a room. If you want to make your bed look a bit more interesting, you can design a frame around it, or at least at the head of the bed you can. Just be careful not to completely surround it, otherwise you're not going to be able to respawn there. Maybe that's a bit much, or you don't have room for something like that. What you can do is very simply add some signs around your bed to enclose yourself in and give it some sort of railing. Speaking of which, placing down some backwards lecterns makes for a cool railing design. Banners make for a great addition to your bathroom and or kitchen, as they kind of look like towels. You can even place them so half the banner is missing under the floor to make it a smaller towel. If you place down four snow layers, put an armor stand with a helmet on top, and piston push a block into it from above, you can nicely display that helmet as a decoration. There are a ton of uses for armor stands, and I've actually made a separate video showcasing some of these ideas. Hopefully, I'll remember to put it in the cards or in the description, so you can check it out if you'd like to. Buttons are a wonderful block when it comes to adding in detail. Something I find myself doing quite a bit is placing a button down with an item frame over it. I'm not exactly sure what it's meant to be, but I'm a big fan of how it looks. If you happen to have some horizontal logs in your build, try sticking a button at the end of it. Whether it's the same wood type or something different, it's just that added bit of extra detail that can improve the look of the overall build. Specifically, stone buttons are great to pose as pebbles in a pathway, for example. Another detail you can add to your pathways is by using slabs and stairs to create some divots, making the road seem more worn and walked on. This next tip is something that can be applied to most types of natural building in Minecraft, and we briefly touched on it earlier, which was to try and build realistically, meaning whatever it is you're making, think how it would look if this were the real world. Take pathways again as an example. You would want to have most of the blocks and texture in the middle of the pathway as that's where most people would be walking, in the centre, not right on the edge. However, you would maybe want the edge to slowly transition outwards and be mixing with the dirt beside the path. And this nicely leads me on to my next point, which is the idea of transitional blocks. We've obviously spoken about doing this for pathways, but there's other situations too where this could be helpful. Say you're building a barn or a stable. The inside is man-made out of wood, the outside just grass or dirt. Instead of having a solid line as a cutoff point, try transitioning the two blocks to show how the outside has been traipsed inside and there's no longer that definitive line. Of course, you could use transitions in your building. In other cases, it's a little bit like the gradient I mentioned earlier in the video. You just have to find some blocks that help you bridge from one to the other. Open or even closed fence gates can look like some nice added support to a beam, for example. If you put something like a fern, bamboo, or dead bush inside of a flower pot and then put some leaves above it, you can make yourself a large indoor plant. And if you have fences in your build like this one does here, maybe stick a wall block at the bottom of it, giving it the look of extra support due to the fact a wall is a bit wider than a fence. There are tons of different blocks and items that emit particles which can be awesome for animating a build. One of my favourites is to add fire under a block to create a smouldering sensation. There's actually a fantastic video I watched a few years ago showcasing some of the uses of particles in survival Minecraft and I'll do my best once again to remember it in the cards but if not check the description down below and it should be listed there somewhere. When making custom trees try mixing up the leaf types and creating your own species of tree. 
Another custom tree tip is when making smaller trees, use fences instead of full log blocks. Sometimes the full logs are just a bit too chunky. A very simple addition you can add to your builds is to put some stairs above and or below your windows. This just adds, once again as I've mentioned many times in this video, a tiny amount of depth and it just looks slightly better than using full blocks all of the time. If you want to make them look even better, you can try adding in even more depth. I do this by placing the window and the block surrounding it back by an entire block, and then adding some extra bits of detail to almost slope your way back out to the rest of the wall. The utility blocks are always helpful to have on hand in survival, but they don't always look the best just grouped together ready to use. So what I like to do sometimes is display them in a way that makes sense. Take my anvil and stone cutter for example. I've got them blocked off mostly using iron bars so you don't accidentally walk right over the spinning blade or bump into the heavy piece of metal. Sometimes that's not the easiest thing to incorporate into a build though, and in that case I like to just cover them up, turn them into a table and it can still be flipped up and easily accessed. For all of you non-Java players, unfortunately this next trick is not for you placing ladders on trap doors. For whatever reason, it's not a feature in any other version. I don't know why, because it's awesome and allows you to make some really cool vertical ladders without having to use full blocks. A very old school building trick here, place rails over some laid down logs to look like lumber being held in place. If you're making a pond or a lake, you could maybe add in some rock protrusions coming out of the ground using slabs, stairs and walls. Perhaps you could also build a custom stream leading to this body of water. If you want to make it a bit narrower at points, you can use waterlogged stairs. A pretty well known trick, but certainly a helpful one, is that string can halt the growth of things such as sugarcane, vines or bamboo, as well as many more. So if you want to stop your vines from spreading like wildfire, or just to have some different heights in your reeds, you can put some near enough invisible string over the top of it and it will stop it from growing. Another great use for string is to hold up carpet blocks. This is especially useful if you're building some sort of canopy, maybe a market stool or an umbrella table perhaps. Place a tripwire hook at the end of a barrel and you've got yourself a tap. That's something you would maybe add to a brewery or a winery. In my winery, I have a mix of oak planks as well as crimson planks on the floor. This is to create a wine stained floor, as though there have been some spillages over time. Another great addition to a winery would be a barrel for grape treading. By surrounding some nether warp blocks with trap doors, you can make a large barrel filled with grapes that could be used to create wine the old fashioned way by stepping on them. Perhaps you could build some super simple cart designs to carry all of that wine around, or whatever else you're looking to transport. When making roofs, experiment with some slabs and stairs at the end point to create some fancy looking finials. You can make some really cool shapes just by changing the direction or rotation of the blocks. There are a lot of small detail blocks that may not be so obvious at first, such as sea pickles or turtle eggs. Although they're not the easiest to get a hold of, they do look really cool when on display. Of course, you can use your imagination to decide on what they actually are. If you're building somewhere with lots of sand and you want to add a bit of texture to the floor, potentially for a pathway, you can use the hidden sandstone block, which is actually just an upside down sandstone stair, and it's the only way to get this specific texture in the floor. Paintings only come in certain sizes, but what if you had a section of wall to cover that doesn't have a painting to fit? Well, what I like to do is add in multiple right next to each other to create this smorgasbord of artwork. If you want to have a lantern placed on a wall but there's nothing to hang it from, I'd recommend placing a fence with a chain and then a lantern hanging down from below. It's probably wise to incorporate a crafting bench somewhere in your build, especially if you're in survival, and if you can't find a spot for it but your ceiling is made out of oak, then you can actually place the crafting table in the ceiling and it will look just like another oak plank from below, as they share the same bottom texture. When building a tower, if you want to have a really pointy roof, instead of just going straight up with the same block, try making a gradual decrease in width. I do this by starting with a full block surrounded with trap doors, then just a regular block, followed by a wall, then a fence, and lastly something smaller like an iron bar or lightning rod. If you're building a dock and you have some log pillars going into the water for support beams, you can use a darker log when in the water to make it seem as though it's wet. If you're building in a snowy biome, I'd suggest making a snow farm so you can get some full snow blocks. 
As you can see, certain blocks cause snow layers to disappear and then show the normal block underneath it. If you then change that for a snow block, it's going to look a whole lot better. Extended pistons make for a cool table design. To make a chair, place down a stair with signs, trap doors, or even item frames on the side of them to serve as an armrest. Unfortunately, you cannot sit down in that, but if you would like to, you can piston push a stair into a minecart and then hop in and out of your seat. When building stairs up to another level, try adding in some sort of railing so you won't be able to fall back down. Whether it's fences, walls, trap doors, or even anvils, see what works for your build. Did you know you can craft log blocks that don't have this texture? By making a 2x2 in the crafting table, you can get yourself three of these. They're just a log block with the same texture on all six sides, basically. And they certainly have their uses. Building large custom trees is definitely one of them. But also, if you're using logs in a wall and you have some glass in that wall, you probably don't want this texture on show. Instead, the side texture would most likely look a bit better. Here is the last trapdoor tip, and yes I know, there have been quite a few. I love trapdoors. <laughs> so much so, I've made an entire video about them before, and why I think they're the best. I'll link that somewhere too, if anyone is interested. But the tip is very simply, you can double up on trapdoors to make a thicker trapdoor. This is especially useful alongside other blocks of the same wood type. You can create a display case by pushing some glass blocks into an armor stand using a piston. I've spoken about this quite a bit in the past, and you're probably very aware if you've watched my tutorials before, but when it comes to building a house, I have a specific order I usually like to go in. I will start with the corner blocks and walls and get a good idea of the size and shape of the build. I then bring the corner blocks up to the height I want the roof to start at and begin work on the outline of it. Then fill it in, most of the time with a different block, and after that I will go around and build my walls and pick out spots for windows and doorways. And at this point, I have the base build, but it's lacking detail, so now is where I go around, adding in lots of things I previously mentioned in this video. As for the interior, I also have a system for that, and it's very similar. I start by smoothing out the ceiling and the walls, and then I will add in my floor. Now I have a nice looking home, but an empty one at that. So same as what I did for the exterior, I go around and add in all of the details and items of furniture. Sometimes there'll be a little bit more planning involved, but that really is the simplified idea, and I personally think it works very well. If you have a staircase made of oak blocks, it could be very nice to add in some bookshelves below it. Because bookshelves are oak coloured, aside from the books themselves of course, it means they blend very well with the oak blocks. When making a map display, put some sort of lighting behind the item frames. You're going to be able to see your maps a whole lot easier that way. When it comes to building fences, for an animal pen as an example, don't just use fences. Every now and again, place in a full block to break up the repetition a little bit. A slab or something may be needed on top so nothing can jump in or out. You can use strip logs of the same wood type in a roof outline instead of full planks. Having layers of glass with an air block in between each of them allows you to create a really cool fog effect. The deeper you go, the more convincing it is. Having some white stained glass and glass panes at the bottom of a waterfall can resemble a splash and the mist that you would see. If you're looking to spruce up your surroundings without having to do any actual landscaping or terraforming, I would suggest bone mill. Place a bunch of this on your grass and it will sprout lots of tall grass and plenty of flowers. However, it's usually a bit much, so you may have to go around afterwards and break some of what has been grown. The last tip I'm going to give you guys is probably the most helpful thing you can do to improve your building. If you don't do this and you find yourself struggling to come up with builds that you're happy with, please take my advice here. And that is to use creative mode. And no, I don't mean change your game mode in your survival world, spawning in lots of different items, that would be cheating. <laughs> I mean get yourself a separate creative world where you can practice your building. If you're trying to do everything in the shackles of survival Minecraft, you are going to feel so free once you can try it out in creative mode. You have access to all of the items in the game, meaning you can experiment with what looks good and what doesn't. You can also fly, so building itself is easier. Plus, you don't have to gather resources or spend ages tearing down a build if you don't like it. You just move somewhere else and try again. Building in Minecraft isn't something you suddenly get good at after watching one video of a guy on YouTube telling you 100 tips and tricks. 
I'm sorry if you thought that was going to be the outcome of this video. No, it's something that takes time. You pick up ideas from people along the way, and you also find things out yourself. It's not a popular saying for no reason. Practice makes perfect. And even then, perfect is what you make of it. Building is an entirely subjective part of the game. There are no good builds and there are no bad builds. The only thing that matters is if you like it. Not anybody else, just you. So build whatever you want, take on my ideas if they're helpful, but at the end of the day, if you're happy with the outcome of something you've created and you've had fun whilst making it, then you've done very well. And that, I think, is the beauty of Minecraft. So there we go, everybody. That was probably over 100 building tips and tricks with what I think is a very important message at the end. So I really hope this has helped you out. Thank you so much for watching. And once again, a massive thank you for 100,000 subscribers. I'm kind of struggling to wrap my head around that idea. But nonetheless, I'm happy to be here and ever so grateful for your support. Thank you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.